All right, here we are for round two, and our hand is really good. We have a one-drop hexproof creature, very, very good auras, two lands, and a spirit dancer. And our opponent is Mulligan to six, and he's on the play. So usually I like to sack my fetch land for a temple garden just to get the damage out of the way. So if you play canopy first you take an extra point usually. Uh, sometimes depends on the matchup. So our opponent's off to a pretty quick start here. Has one card in hand. Um, our hand's pretty good against affinity because we have spear dancer and we just drew a spider umbra. So we can reach up and block uh, various flyers, and even signal pass can be blocked, I believe. Because, yeah, he can be blocked by reach creatures. Um, so I can sack the Heath for a Temple Garden, which deals me three. Or I can play a Canopy, take one, and then the next turn take one from it, and take one from Heath, and get a basic planes so I take one less damage that way because uh, on top of the three I'd take from this I'd take one next turn from canopy so that'd be four total so I'm gonna go with uh, scout here first and foremost Alright, so my opponent has three mana. Um, if he has cranial plating, he can play and equip it, but and I I think he would do that if he had it, so I don't think he has it. Uh, I guess he was deciding if he should attack with Nexus or play a two or three drop. So my guess is he has a two or a three drop in his hand. Um, I can play the scout and trade with Memnite because Spirit Dancer is gonna be like the card I'm gonna be putting auras on this game. Uh, I don't think he has a Galvanic Blast, because he would have attacked with this. So he'd have one a one-turn window to draw one of a couple copies of Galvanic Blast. But this way I save uh, up to four points of damage or more, because if I wasn't blocking this turn, I wouldn't block next turn. So I'll just block and take one. Just want to preserve my life total until I can get these all online. Um, okay, so he has Etch Champion. And now I get to save this just in case he does draw Galvanic Blast, so I can get a Dried Arbor with it. Um, I suspect my opponent will attack with Etch Champion next turn, which will let my Spirit Dancer get in a big chunk of uh, lifelink damage before he leaves it back. And then at that point, I'll just need to dig through my deck, looking for an Evasion, evasion card to swing past this guy. But I do suspect he will uh, swing with it this turn. Hmm. Might be on the same, uh, should I attack with Nexus or should I play my 2 slash 3 drop? Might be on that, that, uh, line of thinking again. Nope, he has another Nexus. So I believe he can animate and then use the other Nexus to pump it. So he can swing for a big chunk of damage here, so I'm glad I traded Scout for Mem Knight. Um, okay, and he does attack with that champion, which is great, because it lets me gain a lot of life here. So, swinging for seven. Okay, so the question is should we play Spider Umber or Ethereal Armor? Ethereal Armor gives one extra point of lifelink damage, but the Spider Umber will allow me to block all of his like flyers, which will save me more life in the long run. So, I believe I will play the Spider Umber. 
Um, I'll take a land out of my deck first. I'm going to grab basic planes. And then we'll play Spider Umbra. And likely our, deci uh, our decision won't be changed here. Um, yeah, two ethereal armors would be a big chunk of damage, but not enough to kill him. Then we'd die on the swing backs, so we'll just play the Coronet. Oh, and we drew Spirit Mantle. Perfect. One of the cards we were going to begin digging for next turn to swing past this Etch Champion. Um, yeah, and we have Lethal for next turn. And I don't even believe a cranial plating can kill me, so should have the game locked up. Sideboarding time. This is a matchup where we board in quite a few cards. Uh, Leyland and Sanctities are garbage, so I was fortunate not to draw one that game. But it wouldn't have been the worst because, as you saw, I didn't really need all my cards. Just needed uh, the Spirit Dancer, a Coronet, a couple auras. Um, okay, so now I'll just board in the cards I do want for sure, which are Nature's Claims, Seal of Primordium. Path to Exiles, and of course, Stony Silence. So it looks like we need need and or want eight cards here. Um, this matchup, I like to board out a lot of my hexproof creatures because Dryad Arbor um, is often reliable enough to win with. So I'll start by taking out all eight, and then I'll add some back in, depending on what other cards I might want. <clears throat> so I do like playing Burnt and Forge Tender over Hexproof Creature. Um, there are times where they'll sideboard in weird removal spells like Dismember, but in general the Forge Tender basically has Hexproof, because it lives through Galvanic Blast. It does live through Whip Flare, which these guys don't. And you can use the Forge Tender to protect Spirit Dancers um, from uh, one of the red removal spells. So I know I want Forge Tender. And then I can either add back in two more of these, or I can play Gaddic Teague in some numbers. Uh, Gaddic Teague keeps the opponent from casting Thought Casts, and Chalice of the Void are the two big ones. On the draw, sometimes it can be a little too slow. But I like boarding in one Gaddock Teague and one Hexproof Creature. I don't want to draw two Gaddock Teagues, but uh, the first one, the first one will give me some utility. And uh, you often don't need to have a creature down on turn one. Uh, usually, like a turn one Hexproof Creature into a turn two like double aura draw, that doesn't even necessarily get the job done against Affinity. So it's more about assembling uh, combinations of cards such as Coronet or Stony Silence. So the turn slower doesn't really hurt too bad. Yes, and this looks good. Okay. Uh, my opponent sent me a message, but I don't think I can read it during sideboarding. Alright, so we have no creatures, and we have no, like, Stony Silences, so this is a very easy mulligan. Here we do have a Stony Silence, we have two creatures. Uh, this hand's really good. We just hope he doesn't have a Thought Seize, or a Spell Pierce, or any card like that. And he has a Thought Seize, alright. Oh, Duress, okay. Well, Stony Silence is going down for sure. Um, 
Stony Silence would have been very nice to have, but we do have a Spirit Dancer plus Spider Umbra to potentially win still. Um, I could uh, curve Dried Arbor into Spirit Dancer, but then that would lose to Whip Flare. So I'm just going to play Razor Virgin Pass. If he does kill my Spirit Dancer when I finally play it, uh, I can just do this turn 3. Opponent has a Blood Moon. I wasn't thinking about Blood Moon, or I could have fetched up my basic planes. We do have the basic forest in hand, so we can Nature's Claim Blood Moon if we draw Nature's Claim or Seal Primordium. And there's Nature's Claim. Um, I'm not going to play it because I guess I want him to have. Playing it would play around Spell Pierce, if he has Spell Pierce. Spell Skite. Yeah, my opponent has all the hate cards. Uh, I'll Nature's Claim this so I can uh, at least cast my white spells. I think I've played my opponent before, and he boards in, like, 11 cards against me. He really, really dilutes his deck. I'll have to keep that in mind. Yeah, and I definitely forgot about Blood Moon. Forgetting about Blood Moon definitely hurt me this game, because then I wouldn't have even needed to Nature's Claim. It... Play Spirit Dancer, and I guess I'll play Windswept Teeth. It'll leave me the option of fetching a Dried Arbor or Basic Plains if he plays in our Blood Moon. Okay, he has Cranial Plating, not a big deal. I just need to draw a removal spell for the spell skite and then I'm in business. And I guess I'll just find the basic planes to thin my deck. Alright, so I'm going to have one turn it looks like. Um, I could play Spider Umber to dig this turn. But I think I'm going to need it to block the Vault Scourge if I do draw the spell. So I'll do that next turn. Opponent has a Ravager. Which I don't believe kills me because Ravager and Cranial Plating. Well, yeah, the Ravager and the Cranial Plating uh, butt heads. I uh, guess I'll start cycling through, why not? Even if I play Spirit Mantle and find an answer to Spell's Guide, I'm dead to both of his creatures. Uh, I don't think there's anything I want to change in sideboarding. We'll just hope to get down the Stony Silence before he plays all of his premium hate cards.
Um, yeah, so uh, the matchup can be tough depending on what uh, they draw post board because they have a lot of one and two ofs in the sideboard. And they can bring them all in sometimes. And this hand is utter garbage, so I'm mulligan. This hand's okay. We're going to lead with Dryad Arbor and then fetch Basic Plains, play Spirit Dancer. If he plays a Blood Moon at some point, we'll still have uh, Basic Plains for these two. I could even path um, Dryad Arbor to fetch Basic Forest if needed. We'll keep this. And. Okay, yeah, the opponent will get into six. So Dryad Arbor. And let's see what kind of draw he has. Cool. Can't take any of my good cards. <clears throat> good cards being the Spirit Dancer, I should say, and this land. Uh, I suspect I'll take Nature's Claim. So we're going to hope our opponent doesn't have uh, Whip Flare next turn. Because we're going to play the Spirit Dancer down. So we can fetch for basic forest if needed later. Um, we're going to hope the spirit dancer lives because this is our main path to victory. Suppose if he had a whip flare, he would have just slammed it. So, it's hard to speculate what my opponent's thinking about here, because uh, I don't know uh, like all the sideboard cards he could have here, and yeah. So here's a spell sky, which I can path. Now I must decide if I want to fetch a basic forest or a temple garden. Temple garden would give me double white so that I could... Cast a Daybreak Coronet in the future. Basic Forest means I don't have to worry about Blood Moon for the rest of the game, pretty much. And because I'm going to be drawing a lot of cards, I think I can uh, do that. And I think I want to put a Spider Ember on my Spirit Dancer so that it can live through... Well, if I grab Temple Garden, I can cast Spirit Mantle. My creature would still live through Galvanic Blast. So pathing my opponent's creature here does help him, but must be done. And then I'll decide between Spider Ember and Spirit Mantle here in a moment. I'm gonna go with the Spider. Hmm. So if I go Spider Umbra, 
Then I can save two points of life. Uh, I guess I'll play the spider ember then. I'd also, I think, rather have this in play to dodge discard because it helps me not lose to this ink moth nexus up here. Um, this turn I believe I can attack. It would be hard for him to assemble a large ink moth nexus. It would be lethal anyways. Okay, there's a Ravager. Ravager would be a way he could make a large Ink Moth Nexus, but he probably cannot make it 10 power next turn. Uh, I guess we'll just hope to draw some of our premium hate card, one of our premium hate cards this next turn. That would be helpful. Alright, so let's play Spirit Mantle. And we drew a bunch of lands. That sucks. Uh, I guess we'll play this so we can fetch a basic forest. And we'll attack. This might make him have to put his counters from Ravager onto Scourge so he doesn't die next turn. Instead of Ink Moth. But yeah, uh, drawing lands there were, was pretty abysmal. So my opponent has one, two, three. As long as he doesn't have anything too special in his hand, he might only be on a three-turn clock. <clears throat> he can uh, make it two turns with Nexus, but I can leave back Spirit Dancer to block it with the protection from creatures ability. And I definitely wouldn't mind if he went all in on Nexus, so I don't think he will be. So the Vault Scourge has attacked and un unattacked like four times. Alright. Let's see if the opponent does anything else with this Infect.
So I'm guessing my opponent's casting Wear Tear with this white mana. Otherwise, you wouldn't want to go all in there. But maybe not. Nope, no Wear Tear. Oh, and there's a good draw. Uh, not only is that lethal, but it would have let me attack and play defense against uh, Ink Moth. But now I, I just have everything I could ever want. And I will swing. My opponent has Slaughter Pact. I do have an Umbra on my creature. I guess Slaughter Pact he wouldn't be able to cast anyways because he doesn't have the mana to pay for it. So, alright, that was a pretty good game. And 2-0 now. And on to round 3.